Hello again, everyone. We are Gaming by Gaslight, and welcome back to RimWorld in our Alpha 17 Raygun tribe. When we last left off, we were still building up towards traveling, and we're still building up towards traveling. However, there is an interesting twist in this video, and that is specifically, I screwed up and uh, somehow lost my audio from my microphone for the first bit of this episode, so that's kind of unfortunate. But basically, we're just growing a bunch of crops right now. We're going to make a whole bunch of pemmican. We've got a little factory set up over there, as you can see in the top, uh, top right-ish quadrant there. And basically, we're just going to keep doing that. Some of our food is rotting away because we don't have any, any kind of refrigeration whatsoever, aside from our delightful little passive coolers there, but, you know... Also, a whole bunch of animals are self-taming for some inexplicable reason, and we're just going to slaughter those because, I mean, a rat is not that useful to us. If it was a frumbo, maybe I'd keep it. Of course, those things eat a whole lot of food. And uh, Basically, our big problem going forward is, as you may notice down there in the corner, it's the 5th of uh, Jugus, and animals can only graze while caravanning in the spring and summer, I believe. You'd figure fall would count as well, but apparently it doesn't. And for some reason, there seems to be, at least as of the time of this recording, I don't know if it's been adjusted or not as of yet, but effectively, uh, animals apparently prioritize eating meals and pemmican over hay grass, even if you bring it. So all that hay grass I've been growing is kind of kind of worthless, actually, as it turns out. It's kind of unfortunate. I assume I, for a mod, will fix that priority or, you know, the next update. I don't know if he'll be, like, in the next alpha or just sort of, like, a little, like, mini patch or something at some point. We'll see. Also, we have some visitors. We can buy some stuff. Good stuff there, but hopefully that whole issue with the food and, uh, like, and food priorities get balanced. Actually, another thing that would be useful is if you could manually set food priorities yourself for people. That would be useful, I guess, as well, because then you could set up things that away. But, uh, yeah, a bit of an issue. Not the worst thing, but not the best thing. So what's probably going to happen is basically, in a moment, I'm going to cut away. This is also probably going to be a, a shorter episode as I chop and splice things together. It's going to be a couple of couple of bits of different episodes all squished together because I my mistake lasted a little while, as it turns out. Very unfortunate, but anyway. Yeah, what's probably going to happen is we're going to travel as far as we can at, at, to somewhere mildly tropical where we can grow your ground. Then we will grow more food and carry on. Hopefully all will work out. And then we'll continue going. Because after all, we have, what is it, two and a half years or something? So it's going to be a bit close. Or no. We have, what was it, there's like ten seasons or something before the, uh... Yeah, so that's actually more than two years. Two and a half. So, yeah, it's going to be... We're going to have to pick it up after after this first year in the game to make sure we avoid the planet killer. But once we hit the roads, we should be fine. So that'll be, you know, thumbs up, good stuff. And, I mean, you know, if worse comes to worse, we just buy a bunch of plasteel and build a ship to escape, but hopefully it won't come to that. So, yeah, with all that out of the way, let us uh, cut away until we do something interesting, like get on the road or hunt with grenades for some inexplicable reason. But yeah, anyway, see you guys in a moment. Alrighty then, so, we're finally ready to get our caravan set up. I mean, look at all that hay. And to, to know now, in retrospect, that the muffalo will eat none of that, it, it hurts me deep inside. Though I think colonists can eat kibble, so I suppose the smart play might have actually been to mix the meat and the kibble, or in the hay to make kibble, and do something like that. Anyway, we're just measuring our time here, because my initial plan was to attack this pirate outpost, but as you'll see, you know, spoiler alert, there's some interesting diversions that happen in the meanwhile, but yeah, basically, the idea is as long as we can get to, like, the actual connected highway that is just off screen from us. Also, I, I want to kind of pay attention to this, because at some point I picked up a bunch of rocks. I don't know if that was here or if that'll be later, but I picked up a whole bunch of rocks for no particular reason, and yeah, that's just, you know, Ridiculous. I mean, why would you why would you carry a bunch of rocks with you? Those chunks are absolutely useless. Uh, well, useless in the sense that uh, 
you really don't need them because you can find chunks of rock on the ground everywhere. That'd be like taking those human corpses with us. I mean, who wants human corpses? No one, that's who. Anyway, but yeah, we're basically gonna take everything we can. The plan is we're gonna stop at that little friendly faction that's between us and the pirate base, sell off most of our junk, hopefully, make a bunch of money, because you never know, we're probably gonna need money in the not too distant future in order to actually afford anything. And, because, you know, it's always good to have a contingency plan. You never know when it's going to turn out that you actually don't have enough time to escape the planet before the planet killer falls. Though, I am kind of wondering, since since episode one, that planet killer warning has not been visible on screen, if I somehow, that got mucked up and there's no planet killer coming. I'm going to keep playing the game like a planet killer is coming, because, you know, we kind of have to, which, incidentally, if I think about it, timing on that... That planet killer should hit sometime in the winter. Or spring. One or the other. Whenever it arrives, the important thing is that it, it is going to cause us great pain and misery, so we gotta make sure that we set it up. Also, I believe... Yeah, there, you can barely see it because the muffalo are swarming it, but I remember to put down a caravan meeting or packing spot. Very important to do that, otherwise people will pack in weird places, you never know. But I look at it, I'm leaving a couple of animals lying around there that I never got around to butchering. That's, that's kind of wasteful. Oh well. Anyway, that's going to do it for this particular colony, so, or not this colony, but this particular camp. Even though I foolishly don't get rid of it right away, just in case for some reason. But uh, yeah, so, alright, time to hit that open road, get out there, do some trading, have a few laughs, have some fun, meet new people, make some money possibly do quests and so on and so forth. Speaking of, the random quests that you can actually get while out caravanning and stuff, very, very useful. Very useful indeed. For instance, uh, apparently just for wiping out a little pirate encampment, and these are like special encounter events that kind of pop up on the map when they show up as quests, you get 2,000 silver. That doesn't sound too bad for me. I mean, it requires a lot of effort considering what you're getting. I mean, you could probably make more money just manufacturing drugs, but, you know, that's a... That's a choice you have to make when you, you know, arrive in those situations. I mean, it's... Do I risk my people dying to kill a bunch of pirates and loot everything that they had on them, plus the, whatever bounty has been put on their head? Or do I just sit at home and make a bunch of space pot? Whichever really floats your boat, I guess. That's... I mean, I guess that's really all you, you can say about that. And, let's see, if I'm smart, I think I sell off some of our meat, because that stuff's gonna rot away and people will be upset. We could've bought this guy, but he's incapable of fighting, so I figured, why? Why buy that? A couple of meals, not bad as well, we're probably gonna need those, so you always gotta be careful of that, because it could rot away. Let's see, I think this is... Yeah, there's that insect jelly, that might've been good, I'm pretty sure insect jelly has a really long shelf life which is good, because then you can hold on to it. Uh, hopefully I sell those chicken eggs. Alright, we're selling the rice. Holding on to the milk, though the milk will probably rot. And my reasoning for getting rid of some of the stuff that can break down is just because I, I don't want a bunch of stuff rotting away on us while we're in the middle of a caravan. And of course, yeah, buy a couple of fine meals, because people will prioritize that. Though, Food priorities, particularly during caravans, sometimes confuse me just- Oh, I did sell the milk. But they sometimes confuse me just a little bit. But, uh, then again, the whole caravanning aspect is still fairly new. I mean, it was only introduced in Alpha 16, so we're obviously, probably, going to be seeing a lot of balancing and changing and back and forth there. There's also, what is it, the Psychic Animal Pulsar? I'm gonna, gonna try to buy that because... That can be very useful if you have a pirate map that's full of animals, so then you just kind of wall yourselves off, and you wait for the animals to kill the pirates, or at least weaken them for you, and if the animals lose, at least you get a bunch of free meat. If the animals win, well, you got a couple of manhunters to worry about, but you can always deal with those in due course. And actually, probably the way to do that would be to send one person in with the animal pulser, and then have that person wall themselves off, and then have everyone else wait outside, because I'm, 
I've never actually tested this. I've heard stories of it being used to great effect, but I've never really tested to see if your own animals would go mad due to the animal pulsar, so you'd probably want to leave your animals outside just to be safe. But we can experiment with that at some point once we once we get around to it, inevitably. As there is a great deal of inevitability to just about anything. And yeah. So apparently I also spent like 10 million years doing trade here, so that's uh Yeah. It was probably much more riveting commentary when I was actually recording it, at least in my own head. Probably should sell some of that steel. That would be a good idea. We're still actually making money out of this, which is the crazy thing. Selling so much. Oh, buying some beer just to... Just so that the colonists are happy, I guess. Just a little bit. There we go. Alright, so we bought that. Now we can keep on making our way down to the pirate camp over there. That's the plan. It'll only take us a couple of days. As you can see, we have 12 days of food. However, it doesn't really end up working out that way due to, well, a combination of our muffalo eating it once winter, or uh, once fall, fall-tober falls in. And, yeah. Hopefully that, that issue with your pack animals eating your human food and not their hay gets resolved at some point because that would be Kind of unfortunate otherwise, but also never a good thing. Our muffalo are reproducing. I don't know where they're getting the time to get it on. Well, it is nighttime, so I guess that's where they're getting it on. But, uh, yeah. Ah, and here, here it is. That uh, little village that we just passed. Or at least, I think it was of that little village, or at least the faction. They, uh, yeah, pirates. So we can go fight these guys instead of the main pirate base, which also works out. And, yeah. Gives us a little mini base that we can park and resupply on. I mean, it is a very risky proposition doing stuff like this because you're almost always going to end up taking some some damages, which is generally not a good thing. And yeah, this is actually not the best pathing, as you'll see in a moment. Yeah, just following the highway is usually, in 99% of cases, staying on the road is faster and better. So. Yes, we have that to keep in mind, but we will probably be cutting away in a moment just to, because it's going to take us another day at least in order to actually reach that colony, so the plan is I will cut away until we're actually ready to start the fight, and that happens, I'll cut back in, we'll have the fight, and then that should end the portion of this episode where I don't have audio, so until then, I will see you guys in just, just a few moments, just watching, just, just killing a couple more seconds here. This is going to be good. It's going to be a great fight. I look very much forward to it. But, uh, yeah. Okay. See you guys in a moment. Just, just about. Almost there. Almost there. Almost fight time. Almost prime time. Alrighty then. And here we are. We are ready to get the fight going. And all should be well. All should be well, hopefully, I think, anyway. I, I've i strategized as best we can. We've shoved our animals off in a corner. Now, of course, as we learned last time, bows outrange uh, charge rifles, and most guns also outrange charge rifles, so a big challenge for us is even though the charge rifle is a really powerful gun, we do need to make sure that... Uh, that uh, things... Yeah, we have to use the terrain to our advantage, basically. We have to make sure that the enemy can never shoot us before we're already in range. And that's, I mean, that's just good practice all around. And it's always a nice sight when we actually see the enemy die, basically right away to our efforts. Though, we're not going to get out of this one unscathed. It's going to be a bloodbath, I tell you. An absolute bloodbath. Though, fortunately, I think there was only like five or six guys. So it's about even numbers. I think that one guy, is that, is that one guy got grenades down there? I think he might. As you can also see, I'm really trying to micromanage this because I am absolutely terrified that we are going to end up dead. Oh dear. Oh, wait. Yeah, you see, that's my problem. When everyone starts shooting at the same guy, that's why I really, really do believe in micromanaging who everyone's targeting, because if everyone's shooting the same guy, inevitably there's going to be overkill. But uh, at the same time, I mean, there's not really much you can do about that aside for, oh dear. My guys are getting set on fire. That's less than good. Less than good indeed, but overall, I mean, 
No, none of our guys are dead yet, so that's the important thing. Things do look like they're falling apart, but they are still mostly together, so that's good. That's, that's the important thing. We're holding together, we're staying strong, we're lasting as long as we possibly can. Uh, apparently a rat or something got run over. That was like the most god-awful scream I've ever heard in my life. And there, yeah, we beat them, so... You know, suck it, raiders. Screw you guys. Unfortunately, uh, Kruka there is a bit injured, but you'll be fine. It'll be great. So, with that in mind, that's where we are going to wrap up this portion of the episode. And when we come back, uh, my mic will be back and I won't be doing post-commentary anymore. So, yeah. Fun times. Say hello to past me, everyone. Hello, past me. Alright, see you guys in a moment. Okay, and we are back. So this is different outpost than where we were last time. Uh, effectively, what's going on here? Quest completed, okay, let's see here. Payment has arrived and the faction relations has been improved by eight. Okay, so there's our money. Sweet, that's good. So I assume that means for sure then that last time we lost or we didn't get it because it went back to our base, which we had, of course, already uh, salvaged or done our, our stuff in. So that's that. I'm a little concerned that our animals decided to wander up here, but that's okay. Uh, let's see here. We need to drop off. Uh, and this is actually a pretty good place. We've got... It's nice and warm. People are uh, living. This would be a, a reasonable spot to set up and, uh, you know, maybe get some uh, growing in and some... Just uh, kind of rest out the winter, re uh, resupply and all that good stuff. So that's probably what we're going to do, in fact. So with that all in mind, I believe I shall probably wrap things up here. Everyone looks like they have they have done their work rather uh, rather well. So that's good. All right. So we this is not the most exciting. Most exciting of places, but, uh, you know, we've got, uh, we've got some beds at least for people, so everyone will be good there. I can just, uh, chuck off, uh, let's see here, we will drop corpses, I guess, in here where no one has to look at them. Or, yeah, allow rotting corpses, there we go, this one we can delete, and, uh, yeah, so we'll pop out here. This is where we ended up. As you can see, kind of due to the mic-related issues, we did lose a little bit of space, but that's all right. We'll just settle in here. That's good. We're happy. Everyone is doing reasonably well, I guess. This is going to be like the ugliest, ugliest place of all time. But we'll, we'll drop all of our stuff in here for now. This is how we'll I really hope no one accidentally eats that Luciferium. That would be very bad, all things considered. Uh, probably want to get some orders to just chop down trees, but then again, we're, I should have, I guess, in retrospect, put our stuff there, but... All right, so we'll order people. We'll chop some stuff down. We'll get our stuff in there. We want the animals to stay in the animal area, so when they wake up, they'll do that. Everyone should hopefully... Oh, yeah, we still got tables. I could install the tables. All right. So we'll install some tables and some chairs. All right, at least that way everyone will be good. And uh, I don't think I have acknowledged it yet, but I was informed a little while ago that like if you have like a corner thing going here, then the people sitting at the corner, one of them will not actually, it won't count as eating at a table. So that's a weird situation. Gert. Okay, well, it's just Gert. I mean, who cares about Gert, right? Oh, wait, 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 you're actually... You're... No, no, I don't really think we'll worry about you. Uh, Kroka, wake up and uh, strip this guy. I'm gonna wake everyone up, just so that we can... Just so we can move and get everything... Oh, alright, I would I would have liked it if you would actually help all some of our stuff, but all right, if uh, you can't be bothered, I guess I understand your situation. Uh, but yeah, this is where I'm going to wrap this episode up, so until 
Till the next time, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Don't forget to hit that like button or maybe leave me a comment down below to let me know what you're thinking. I will see all you in the next video.